this video, I'm going to show you how to create a, both a frequency table and a histogram for some quantitative data. So I have some sample data values here in this first column. Um, these are just random, randomly generated values here. Um, and first of all, there are quite a few different ways that you can create histograms in Excel. Um, I won't be addressing all of them here. One option is using the, the histogram tool in the data analysis tool pack. Um, I do have a video about that that I'll link in the description. Another option is if you're using a more recent version of Excel, there is a built-in histogram tool in the insert menu here, kind of in the center. Um, and this gives some nice, quick, easy histograms, but unfortunately it's not super easy to customize, um, to customize the classes. And it also doesn't give us a frequency table. So it's not ideal for what um, we're trying to do in our class. So I'm gonna use um, a method where we're actually gonna generate a frequency table first um, using this count ifs function. Um, and then from that table, we will create the graph for our histogram. So in some cases, you might have some set classes already determined um, for your data. In this case, I don't. So I'm gonna investigate the data a little bit. I'm gonna find the minimum with my min function and the maximum with the max function. So my smallest value is just under 10, 9.83. My highest value is 80.29. Also notice that my data values all have two decimal places. So that will be important when I decide my lower and upper class limits. Um, then the range here is gonna be my max minus my min. So the range is about 70 in this case. So I wanna imagine taking that range of values about 70 uh, units wide and divide this into a certain number of classes. Now, how many classes you choose really is a little bit up to you. Um, generally, I shoot for about 10. If you have a smaller data set, which this one's not really that big, it only has 20 values in it, um, then you might go a little lower, maybe closer towards five classes. Um, for a larger data set, you might go up to maybe 20. You don't want to have a ton of classes because then you're going to have many, many, many bars with probably low frequencies. Um, but you also don't want too few classes because if you create a histogram with say three bars or three classes, you're not really gonna be able to see the detail of the, of the uh, distribution. So I'm just gonna say uh, maybe around 10, maybe slightly less because it's smaller, eight, something like that. Um, if I went for eight, uh, if I want eight classes, the class width, sort of the exact class width dividing this into eight pieces would be, I would take the range of the values and divide it by how many classes I want. So 70 divided by eight, this gives me 8.8. .8. Now I don't want to use 8.807928 for my class width because that would give me really strange classes. Um, so I want to kind of round this to a nice number. Now, there's no exact rule for this. Um, here, I could round this to nine, which is the closest whole number. Um, class width of nine would be fine, although it's, again, going to give us kind of strange uh, ranges of values because we're going to be counting by nines. I might opt to do up to 10 here since that's a nice even number. Um, because I'm making this class width bigger, that means I'm going to have fewer classes. So I aimed for eight. I'm probably going to have, you know, six or seven or something, something along those lines, um, probably about seven here. <laughs> Uh, so I think that that's reasonable. If you wanted to have more classes, then you might go smaller. Maybe I do five and get more classes. But because this data set is relatively small, I don't think I want a ton of classes. So I'm going to go with class width 10. So that means that when I'm setting up my lower and my upper class limits, the difference between one class and the next is going to be 10 every time. So I'm going to kind of set this at 10 here. Um, I also need to determine where should my first class start. 
Now your lower class limit could in theory just be your minimum value. Um, you have to have something that's at your minimum or below so that you can make sure you're containing all the data. 9.83 would be a strange place to start my interval though. Um, I could start potentially at nine and have it be a whole number. Um, but because my class width is 10, I think I might actually just start this at zero and then count by tens so I could just do 10, 20 here, but I'm going to use Excel to fill this in. So I'm going to do an equals, click on my previous lower class limit and add 10. And then I'm going to drag that formula down. So this is using, again, the formula previous lower class limit plus 10 here. Um, and then dragging this down, this is giving just counting by tens up to however far we need to go. Now I'm going to figure out how many of these we need. Our maximum is 80, so this 90 should be um, unnecessary. But I'm just going to fill this in to make sure I have enough classes. And then the upper class limit, I'm going to decide what that first starting one should be. This needs to be a number just less than 10 because my next class is going to start at 10. I don't want to actually put 10 here because then the number 10 would fall into both the first class and the second class. So instead, I'm going to go just under 10, 9 point something, and I need two decimal places here because my data has two decimal places. So 9.99 would be the number just before 10 if we're rounding to two decimal places. And then just like before, I'm going to count by 10. So adding 10 to that previous upper class limit means that my second class will go from 10 to 19.9 and then from 20 to 20.9 and so on, or 29.9 and so on. So I'm going to drag my formula down. Um, and this is giving me the ranges. Now, again, looking at my maximum value of 80, 80.29 is going to fall into this class here. So this last one from 90 to 99.9 is not necessary. Um, if you need to, you might have to add some more classes, right, if you didn't get enough. Um, but just make sure that your starting class and your ending class are appropriate to fit the whole range of values you have. So this actually ends up with um, nine different classes. So my desired number of classes was eight. I have slightly more than that. That's okay, no big deal. Um, now, in addition to the lower class limit and the upper class limit, I also have a column here for the class. So this would be like the range that each of these classes represents. In order to fill this in, I could just type these out, you know, 0 to 9.99, right? I basically just want these ranges corresponding to the lower and upper class limits. So you can type them all out if you want to, but if I want Excel to do my work for me, I'm going to use a function called concat. Concat is short for concatenate. There is also a function called concatenate, which will actually do the same thing here. Um, there are similar functions, but the concat function is a little newer. Uh, and so I'll go with this one. So I'm going to do equals concat and then a parentheses. Um, and what this function does is it takes uh, pieces of text and just kind of sticks them together. So I want to start with my lower class limit. That's in my case G7. And then I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to say stick this together with a dash. So for the dash, I need to put this in quotation marks to make this um, a little bit of text. So I'm saying take the zero in G7, um, stick it next to a dash, and then I'm doing another comma after that dash in parentheses, and then I'm going to stick on my upper class limit. So here's what my function looks like. And when I press enter, it'll show the 0-9.99 that I wanted. Now, because I set this up with my cell references for the 0 and 9.99, I can now drag this down using the bottom right-hand corner, and it'll do the same thing for all of my different classes. This column here is not really needed in order to count the frequencies or create the frequency table. This is just gonna be here for labeling purposes later. 
Okay, so once I've determined these classes and I have everything set up, now we want to go through the work of actually finding the frequencies for each of these classes. So again, what this means is how many of our data values in the data set fall in this case between zero and 9.99. Now I can tell just by looking at this data set that there's only one of those values. This 9.83 is the only value that comes out less than 10. So I expect that this frequency will be one. But I don't want to do this by hand because my data set might have hundreds or thousands of values in it. So I want Excel to count this up for me. Um, there are, again, multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to use this function called count ifs. So count meaning count and ifs meaning if such and such is true. This is giving conditions on what numbers we want to count. Um, in this particular case, I want to say count up all the numbers that are bigger than zero or greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 9.99. Basically count up all my data values that fall within this range. So here's what this looks like equals count ifs. And I have the syntax in this text box, text box up above. The first input is going to be the range of data that I want to look at. So that's my data values. Um, you can either highlight the specific values, or in this case, you can just highlight the whole column if you want to. Um, this should just ignore the, the title, so no big deal. And I'm going to put a comma. Now Excel is asking me for criteria one. Now the criteria, the first criteria I'm going to use is that this number has to be greater than or equal to my lower class limit. So for the greater than or equal to, I need to put this in quotation marks. So quote, greater than symbol equals, that's the greater than or equal to, and then end my quote. And then I'm going to put an ampersand here. Um, this is actually the same as the concatenate function we saw earlier. This is going to stick together that greater than or equal to with my lower class limit. In this case, that would be the zero. You could type zero in here, but of course I want to click on my cell um, so that I don't have to type this out for every single row. So this is basically saying look in column A and count how many of the values in column A uh, are greater than or equal to zero. That would actually be all of them. But I wanna add another condition too, comma. I need to put in another range. This is actually gonna be the same range. Um, you can use this count ifs and look at say different columns from a database and check different conditions. But in this case, we're looking at the same values in both cases. But now I wanna say, um, I want these values not only to be greater than or equal to zero, but also less than or equal to the 9.99 value. So I'm going to add a comma and put in my next criteria. So this one is quote less than equal quote. So my less than or equal to end my quotes, put in my ampersand, and then I'm going to put my upper class limit. So I want this to be less than or equal to 9.99 in this case. And then I'm going to close my parentheses. And when I press enter, it tells me frequency one, which is exactly what I expected. There's just one value in this list that falls um, between zero and 9.99 inclusive. All right, so this is kind of a, a, a big mouthful function here. Um, but once we've done this for the first uh, class, we just need to do the exact same thing for all the other classes. So I can just take my function, my formula here, and drag it down and find the frequencies of all of these different classes. So these last two bars here, this really is our frequency table, right? We've got each range of data values and how many data values fall within that range. So for example, the 50 to 59.99 class is the one with the highest frequency. There were six numbers in that range. Um, and then we have something that looks a little bit like uh, maybe a normal distribution around that. Um, if all you need is a frequency table, then you're done. 
If you also want a histogram, then I'm going to create a graph from this little table. So I don't need the whole table. I just need the class labels, sort of these ranges, um, and the frequencies. So I'm going to highlight those two and then go to the insert menu. And then I'm going to put in just a basic bar chart or what the what Excel calls a column chart. So I'm going into the top left first option here. I'm not using the histogram tool. This is just a regular bar or column chart. And you see that along the horizontal axis, I have each of these classes labeled as a range. And then the height of my bars um, is the frequency, which is exactly what I want for a histogram. Uh, now I do need to make some modifications to this. One is I need to add uh, labels to the two axes. So I'm going to go um, under the chart tools design tab to add chart element over here on the left. And on the axis titles, I'm going to add a horizontal one and a vertical one. Um, and then you want to label your horizontal axis with whatever makes sense for your data. This data doesn't really have any units or anything, but Generally, you want to describe what's the data shown in this graph and what units does it have. The vertical axis is always going to be frequency. Um, you could call it something else like count or something like that, but typically histograms are always going to be labeled as frequency. And then I'm going to give this a better title as well. You might call it the distribution of whatever your data is or histogram or um, something that's describing what, what data you're looking at. The other thing I want to change um, that sets apart a histogram from a bar chart is that I don't actually want gaps in between these bars. Um, for categorical data, that makes sense, but because these are ranges of values, I don't want these gaps. So I'm going to double click on one of the bars, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to get these settings showing up on the right, this format data series. I'm going to choose the option with the little bars and then go to the gap width, which is right at the bottom, and shrink that gap width down to zero. Now, I do still have some gaps in my data, and that's because some of these classes had frequency zero, so a couple in the beginning and one towards the end. That's perfectly fine. Um, what I don't want to see is just gaps in between each class um, on their own. Now you can also modify you know, the style of the chart if you want with some of these chart styles. You can change colors, you can change other labels, and et cetera. Um, but this is a perfectly fine histogram for me. Um, something you might want to do, especially since many of our bars are the same, is if you double click on the bars and go to the fill, you can also give the bars a border which just kind of gives an outline to those bars. So it could be useful. Um, but that is about it for this video. Hope that helps make histograms. Um, these can be some of the trickier uh, graphs to make in Excel, but they are super valuable in analyzing our um, quantitative data. Thanks so much for watching.